Hey, I'm extremely excited to be standing here tonight and to be launching a competition for what I think is the best instrument in the world, of course, the cello, and I say that with a lot of bias. But I believe that the Australian Cello Awards is going to provide an invaluable launching pad for young cellists from both Australia and New Zealand. Now, since this competition is all about cellists, I've been asked to tell you a bit about how I grew up to become one myself and about how competitions helped to carve out a path that led me to a fairly su successful career. So um, I was born into a um, fairly musical family in Perth, all amateur musicians, and grew up in a big old house that was a typical Australian house that was surrounded by very wide verandas. And my parents used to, on hot summer nights, have amazing chamber music parties on these verandas, everybody playing outside. When I was about eight years old, I was forced to learn the piano. And I hated the piano with a passion. I just, I, the piano to me was like a piece of furniture that you just had to touch and, and invariably your fingers ended up in the wrong places. And at these chamber music nights, there was a, a cellist that came along on a regular basis, and his name was Mr. Bean. Not the Mr. Bean, but it was another Mr. Bean. And I think, you know, being the age of 10 or so, I was more fascinated by the size of the instrument than anything else. And Mr. Bean happened to have a three-quarter size cello, which he lent me. And I knew from the very first moment that I tried to play anything on it, um, that that's what I would become, a cellist. I fell madly in love with it. So I began lessons, and as time went on, I started to enter small cello or string competitions around Perth, cello competitions. And these were always very scary events, especially for a young child. They're even scary for older children. And always seemed to be held in sort of dark, dreary halls. And they would um, inevitably have these what I called competition ladies who'd come out at a certain stage, come to the front of the stage, and they'd say, competitor number 17. And that sound always filled you with dread because it was your turn to go out and play. I actually found the other day the adjudicator's award sheet, this very yellow piece, and I just thought I'd read it to you because it's quite amusing. It says, she has much promise as a cellist and she should be encouraged to develop this gift. She should do very well indeed. The tone is warm and alive, intonation good, and the bowing has a most attractive freedom. <laughs> <laughs> so I especially liked that bit. Um, so after that, when I was about 14, and I'd progressed a, a, a bit, I suppose, there was another competition that was much bigger called the Garland Competition. And the prize money for that was $500, and I thought that would buy quite a lot of shoes. Um, <laughs> I'm, I was lucky enough to make it to the final round of that competition, but I had been quite ill the week before and ended up in hospital for a week. Came out the day before the final round, looking like a stick insect, but I still had to play, and I played the Foray Elegy uh, as one of my pieces. And I remember being absolutely terrified, and the last note of that piece is um, just a very long open C string which you, you, it requires a lot of control to actually you know, hold your bow and, and make a beautiful sound and, and, and finish off with something memorable. Well, I was so nervous that my, um, my bow hardly made contact with the string. It was just bouncing all the way along. But I did win that competition as well, and that's when I thought, well, you know, maybe there is something in this for me. So then, quite a few competitions later, and um, while I was studying then at, at university in America, I was lucky enough to win the Hammer Rostropovich Prize, which gave me, um, I won $10,000, and in those days that was a lot of money. And that gave me invaluable access to and lessons with Rostropovich. That's certainly a time that I will never ever forget, and that money was um, incredibly useful. My parents were thrilled because the fees for the university were huge and you know I think all students have this problem when they're going overseas to start it's so hard to find the money just to live to, to to pay your tuition fees so you know it certainly was it was a huge help in that sense and it and, and it was a time yeah that I'll just never forget 
So all these experiences made me, of course, work extremely hard. I was forced to learn a lot of repertoire, often in a very short amount of time. And I learned how to perform under intense pressure. I also learned about what might go wrong. And um, my student colleagues and I uh, used to have quite a giggle, actually. Um, I'm talking about the early 80s. There was a, a video in those days going around of a cellist who was um, competing in the Tchaikovsky competition, which was the most famous competition, probably, in, uh, in Russia. And uh, there was a video of this poor girl walking onto stage looking white as a sheep. And that she had to play the um, Tchaikovsky Pezzo Capriccioso, which for the cellists here, you'll know that's an extremely virtuosic, difficult piece. And so off she went, and then about halfway through, suddenly there was a, an enormous bang. And just at the very base of the cello, there's a, there's a very a fine wire, or pe sometimes a piece of gut, that actually holds the whole instrument together and, and um, supports the tension of the instrument. Well, this piece of wire snapped and literally her cello exploded. I mean, there were bits flying everywhere. She stopped, she looked absolutely horrified, and this was all on film. And she had to just, she picked up her cello, uh, her, the, the pieces, she literally was crawling around on the floor, picking up all these pieces. And then the judges, thank you very much, and off she went, and that was it. And we, we thought this was hysterical. But you know, I mean, these, these competitions can be very, very stressful. So whilst at work um, just a few days ago, I was having a chat with Vladimir Ashkenazi, the chief conductor of the Sydney Symphony Orchestra, about his own competition experiences. And he's often told us about the very meagre circumstances in which he grew up. He grew up in a tiny one-room flat. Uh, he had bo both his parents there, two beds and a piano, and some very basic cooking um, things, tools and maybe a sink, but no bathroom. They had to share the bathroom with hundreds of people. And uh, it, it was tough, you know, and he said it wasn't until he actually won the Tchaikovsky competition that he literally woke up the next morning in sort of a five-bedroom apartment, which suddenly the government had provided for him. Now, the winner of the Australian um, Cello Awards may not necessarily win a new house, but unless Roland, you can organise that. <laughs> but um, the prize money, I have to say, is incredibly generous. Plus, there are amazing performance opportunities so that these players have a chance to achieve maximum exposure. So I was a little bit worried with so much on offer when just a few days ago I went to listen to and watch the DVDs of the second round competitors. We were certainly provided with copious amounts of gourmet food, and I just hoped that the playing would match the quality of the chocolate cake. <laughs> I was also not exactly sure what kind of player I was looking for, or what qualities I was looking for exactly. Well, very early on, all these questions were answered for me. I really, I was covered in goosebumps. It was, it was so exciting. The standard is so high. It's, it's extraordinary, and I, I really I can't wait for the finals in March next year. So I learned in a very short space of time that a winner, one of the main things they need is personality and musical personality. It's not enough just to play the notes. You have to really have something to say. And a competition is a strange thing because, well, music is not about competition, and a competition is not necessarily just about winning. It's about what you learn along the way, and it's about getting exposure. And for us, who've already done our competition time, and for you, our supporters, it's about making an important investment for the future to provide Im inspiration and encouragement for the next generation of cellists. And I sincerely hope that this, the first Australian Cello Awards, is just the beginning of a great tradition in this country.